Hey there, in today's video, I am discussing or showing you a variety of other art supplies that are not paint related. So some of them are water soluble, some of them are not, but it's the idea is what can I use besides paint during those times when I don't wanna drag out my paint or I need to keep things a little bit maybe tidier than normal, or for me, it's a lot of times I'm working at my desk and I just wanna watch a video, but I also wanna make marks while I'm doing it. So there's just a whole myriad of reasons why you may or may not wanna you, you know, pull out your paint. And so it, might, it might be personal preference. It might be that you never wanna pull out your paint. But anyway, I wanted to show you a variety of other ideas, things that I have on hand. I did not go out and buy anything, but it was like, okay, I have these things. I do use them on occasion, or some of them I use all the time but I wanted to kind of open open a door like, oh, here, here's some ideas and some different um, things that you could possibly use. Again, the beauty of mixed media art is anything goes. So whatever you want to use and in whatever order you want to use it and however you want to use it, you can. And so no rules. That's, that's what I always, that's what I love about it is that there is just so much freedom and the ability to be creative using whatever uh, medium that you like and however you like to use it. So anyway, enough of that chit chat. Let's get started with the video. The first thing I wanted to show you were color, more colorful or yeah, I guess more colorful is the best way to put it. Uh, things that you can use that are water soluble. So for example, I, of these, you can see I've hardly used these. I use these um, Neo Color 2 water soluble. They do make these crayons in a non water soluble, so you do have to get the, the number two uh, in order for them to be water soluble. I like using these in an art journal, particularly when I am, like, let's say I'm watching a, an art video, I'm doing something else, I'm listening to something, but I don't wanna have paint or anything like that. I love taking these crayons and then I can activate them with a water brush or something like that, or just leave them as crayon. It's, it's your choice. So these are great, they're water soluble. This is a set, you can see it's pretty bright for me. I've just, I've held on to them because I do occasionally use them. They are called uh, Faber-Castell Gelatos. And they are kind of rich and creamy as well, kind of lipsticky-like in a way. And they are water-soluble. I don't use them as much just because I don't feel like I have colors that are true to me as much. Um, and they, but they are also another option for uh, it, it's you know water activated and then I also have these ink tense blocks which I also have not used a lot I think what happened was in the early days I bought supplies because I you know was learning and then I discovered that I prefer you can see the color palette here I pre prefer a more muted color palette and I found with some of these uh, other materials it was trickier to to get them to the color that I liked Although I can see a color here that I probably like, like this green, this olive green. So, you, you know, I, but I also don't want to get away, get rid of everything because I could also use these, bring these over and, and then activate them with water. So when I talked about earlier, like I primarily use acrylic uh, paint, but as in a mixed media way, I also like to incorporate other things. So I might use this to scribble on the page ahead of time or these other supplies I'm going to talk about. I like to be able to bring in all, all variety of things. So these are one option for bringing in color, for you know messing around w with color when you don't want to bring in paint. So I'm going to move these aside and show you the next, next thing. Next thing I want to show you is, or talk about, is charcoal. I love charcoal and it is water soluble and it is super messy. Although I suppose you could use like these pencils and it wouldn't be quite as messy. And even the this these pencils aren't as messy. But uh, obviously, if you're using a chunk of charcoal or a willow charcoal, there's just a variety of different charcoals and looks that you can get in terms of the black. I have a charcoal, white charcoal pencil as well. And then my favorite, my absolute favorite, is these big, chunky, extra large Derwent charcoal blocks. Love them. And you can see they're well used and well loved. And they just, they can be bold, they can be they can be used on top of things and ground in and create just beautiful colors. The colors are just amazing. So this is a, you know, another way to use non, another option for not, if you don't want to use paint. 
So I'm gonna set these aside and show you the next thing. Another personal favorite are the Stabilos. And they, to me, kind of are similar to a um, to the charcoal, but the Stabilo seems like, you know, it comes in pencil form and it also comes in these woody forms, like, like um, chunky, woody, heavy, thick, <laughs> like children's kind of thing. And they're water soluble and they mark on just about anything. I do have them, I primarily use them in black. I do have blue and red and I have a brown. Um, but even on these, I use probably the brown and black, the mo and I guess the white. I don't use red very often, but sometimes you do need a pop of color, and I have used those. These are water-soluble. I use them a lot. They make great marks, and the pencils are pretty inexpensive as a great way to get started, like 2 or $3 a piece, uh, and maybe even less if you were you know, in sight or, or, or in a store or if you um, found a set, set of them. So I'm going to set these aside, and we'll go on to the next thing. Okay, the next thing I wanted to show you uh, is graphite. And not all graphite is water soluble, so you do have to kind of check and, and see what you have. For example, though, again, I don't use them as often as the charcoal. I do love these thick, chunky, extra large graphite Derwent. They're, the, they're similar in size to the, to the charcoal blocks I have. Love them, and they are water soluble. I also really love these and I can't even see the name, Lyra, Lyra pencils. They come in water soluble and non-water non soluble. So this one here is non-water soluble. I don't use it quite as much. I do like how water soluble, I like how it, you just, the unexpected results that you get. But it, this one is great for also having marks that are gonna be seen and that will last a little bit longer. I also have these Derwent pencils that are graphite in different colors, kind of muted, and they are also water soluble. And they're super fun to use and easy to use. And I also will sometimes use these when I am, you know, sitting and I don't want to pull out paint. So I will just do some sketching. Not, eh, I don't really sketch a lot, I'll be honest, but I use them to make marks or different, yeah, marks, I guess. And I, ha I do sketch, but not, not, uh, not as much as probably most people do. Then last but not least is just your traditional pencils. And these are non-water soluble, so they will, they will not activate with water. But I have, these are just, you know, artist, not art, even art, I mean, I don't know what that is. Stadler, there's all, you can just, you could use a number two pencils, it doesn't really matter. Faber-Castell, they all, everybody has them. I sometimes, I have bought a few different brands just trying them out and I don't use pencils a lot in this in the traditional sense, like just sketching out a, 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 a picture or an image. But I like to make marks with them, and I and I do and I do use them just on occasion to to do some sketching. But I I don't I sketch I, I always say I sketch with my paint. So, but these are just a lot of options. So I'm going to set these aside and show you the next thing. The next thing I wanted to show you are soft pastels. I have a great a beautiful collection of soft pastels here, and they're actually on the newer side. Um, I, I I had a ton, and then I just wheedled them out and thought I'm just going to keep the ones I absolutely love, and the I really love certain brands and the softness of them. So this is a set that I have here that I use. Uh, and then I also have a set of Derwent pastel pencils. And this is another fun tool to use. These are kind of messy, I'll, I'll be honest. So I don't typically take take these and sit at my desk and watch a video or you know somewhere. Whereas these, I can do that because I'm not gonna, my, my, my whole hand isn't gonna be covered in pastel you know, shave, not shavings, but powder. And then it's going to get all over everything. So when I'm, when I'm not making art and I want something less messy, I will grab these different kinds of pencils and pa these pastel ones are good for that as well. So, cause I do love the look of a pastel and the performance of a pastel. And it's just, it's just another great option in mixed media art. The next thing I wanted to show you are oil pastels. And I, these are also something that you can use that are not messy. And you can color with the, them on whatever part, you know, thing you're working on. Any, you can work on an art journal, you can work on canvas, you can work on whatever substrate you happen to be having. And these are a great alternative if you do not want to bring out your paints. And you can use them in addition to the paints. Now, I will tell you, people will say, uh, and it's true, you, to put acrylic paint over the top of these, it makes it 
the oil pastel may not dry or it doesn't perform the same or it might leak through. And this, this is all true. And sometimes I like that. So sometimes I will use an oil pastel and then I will paint acrylic over it and scratch it out because it gives this really unexpected result. And I like that. That's the beautiful thing about mixed media art is you don't have to adhere to the rules of traditional artists. If you were an oil person, then you would never do this. But as mixed media artists, I feel like we can, we can, we can break all those rules. I also have these really cool pigment sticks, which are oil sticks that I have hardly used. And I hear, here's the problem. Sometimes when you spend a lot of money on an art supply, then you're reluctant to use it because you're like, what if I mess it up? What if, why, why I have to do something amazing with it. So I'm going to try to break my own rule, which I break my own rule, which is you got to use all your art supplies because they're, they're just not languishing. I mean, you've already invested in the money, so use them. So that's my next goal is to start using these, uh, find ways to use these pigment sticks. And I think for the most part, I would use these at the end on top of whatever other acrylic painting I was doing because then that would allow the dry time, then I would allow the dry time for these because these will take time. It's like oil paint essentially in a stick form is the best I understand it. So last but not least, I have these pencils or I don't know, they're not really a pencil. They're called a China marker and I have it in red. red. I do not have red. I have black and I have white. Wow. Um, and they write over the top of anything and everything. And so I actually have bought two new black ones because I went through my other black one and, um, and then I, got, I have white ones too, which I don't use the white quite as often as I use the black. The white to me doesn't show up as boldly as I would like it to. So I tend to, to use the white or the black more often. But these are great and they're fairly inexpensive as well. It's another mark making addition to your supply if you're looking for something else to add to your your repertoire so to speak okay last but not least are markers and the, i want to use markers more i thought that was a posca marker but that is actually called a b stroke chalk marker which i'm not sure i think you can use it on a chalk board or something that's not what i meant to grab but I do have it, so it probably works. But um, these Posca pens, everybody swears by them, and I have used them in my art. But I'm not—I don't use markers as much as I think I want to. I just, for some reason, I don't gravitate towards them. But I do have a, them in black and a white, and they're great for mark making. And again, it's a no mess situation. So if I had a page. In my art journal, I could just be making all kinds of marks and there would be no mess. And I like that idea. I also have random markers that I have picked up through the years. And so I keep those on hand with in different kind of more muted colors, just again, for making marks and random things in books. I don't use markers uh, as much, probably my least of all of these, uh, these supplies that I have mentioned. So anyway, I just want to give you some ideas for other types of non-paint uh, supplies, art supplies that you can use in your mixed media art because anything goes, anything goes. And I'm, I'm sure there are so many more things that I'm not even thinking of, which I guess I could grab over here. I mean, actually just even traditional pens. You could use a pen in your, in your uh, uh, art, your mixed media art too. I, didn't, I did not think to bring that up. And some pens will be water soluble and some will not. So it just depends on what you're looking for. So actually, okay, I was gonna end right now, but hang tight, I have one more thing. Okay, I totally spaced, but I have a whole set of the Faber-Castell pit pins. And I used to use them a ton when I first started making art, so I'm assuming some of them may be dried out, but you can see this is a huge bin of them. They are great because when you first put them on, you can actually move them around uh, just with your finger or with a water, and then they are permanent when they dry. So they are really great for that. I just, like I said, I just don't use markers that often anymore, but this is also, these are really great, and they come in really pretty sets and different sets, and I'm sure you could get them, you know, on sale or, um, or get a few just to try out. So this is another great option and they are, yeah, they're just a really beautiful marker. So that honestly sums it up. I do not see, I cannot see or think of anything else at this point, but there are, it just, just shows you there's a world of art supplies out there. Pick and choose wisely so that you don't end up like me with a thousand different things, but 
you know, it is fun to try and it is fun to sometimes um, reach for something new and unexpected because you just don't know where it might lead. And I think that is the beauty of mixed media art. So I hope you have fun exploring and go dig through all your drawers and pull out all your art supplies and see what you have and start using them. And so anyway, I hope this has been helpful and thanks for watching and I will see you next time.